Hello everyone. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. And we'll start at that first verse. And it reads, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture or training and ammunition of the Lord. Let us pray. Eternal God, we come in the name of Jesus, and again, we are so thankful to be able to present your word. I ask that you will prepare the hearts and minds of your people to receive it. They that have ears to hear, let them hear. I pray that the word will go forth in the spirit and power of your love to bring about conviction, to bring about change, because it is in Jesus' name we praise you and thank you for it. Amen. It is with great care and concern uh, that we discuss this word on today, because for many, it may be um, painful, regretful, or full of emotions. Yet when I look at or listen to our youth that seem to struggle more than most, I notice that there's something with them that is seen, heard, or even felt that's not acknowledged. There's anger, resentment, even a root of bitterness, pain, hurt, confusion, disappointment, and hate towards or concerning their parents. And when you try to engage this something uh, that is with them, you get an earful. Amen? I said before not acknowledged because so many want to forget the root cause. But we all should consider this, the importance of this, because there is an answer. And that answer is forgiveness. The scripture says, children, you are to obey your parents, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Now, to obey is to do what you are told. To honor is to respect them for, listen, who they are, your parents. Even if, listen to this, they are not acting or behaving according to the role of a parent. Wow. To obey is to do what you are told. To honor is to respect them for who they are your parents, even if they are not acting or behaving according to the role of a parent. Wow. In other words, you may have a problem with them as a person, but as dad or mom, as your parent or parents, according to God and his word, you are to obey them as long as you are under their care. Yet, they are to be honored as long as you live. Now, for many, <laughs> these words don't sound good. And the thought itself doesn't feel good. But the truth will make us free. There have been and are some great and wonderful parents. I, I have to say that. But the truth is, there are some who have not been and are not great and so wonderful. Amen? Some allowed families or children to suffer or struggle because of the selfish choices and decisions made in life. Some refused to accept the results of unprotected sex. And some just don't care one way or another. But the bottom line is, and the repeated cycle is, the children were and are always affected. You know how you know? The children are now adults with issues that are very real. You see, a child doesn't understand dad or mama's desire to commit adultery or cheat on each other. Even the scripture says in Proverbs 6, chapter, in the 32nd verse, but whosoever commits adultery with a woman or man has no understanding 
and destroys his own soul. A child doesn't understand the love for or the enslavement of a dad or mom on drugs or alcohol. They don't understand why there is violence or abuse in the home. They are not given answers. So when there is not enough or no lights or no place to live, children just don't understand. So this in itself can lead to anger, resentment, bitterness, pain, hurt, confusion, disappointment, or even hate towards parents. But our care, instruction, and even discipline upon them should encourage them to grow, to love and show respect for themselves and for others. Proverbs, the 29th chapter, in the 17th verse says, Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. So verse 4 says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurturing or training and ammunition of the Lord. This is important because, believe it or not, bullying can begin at home. Amen? Being picked on or harassed by your dad or mom, called fat or no good, comparing you to a brother or a sister, treating you as if you are not welcomed or wanted, being abusive or negligent, and the list goes on. But this is what I know. There is, there are no perfect parents anywhere. We all have made mistakes. We all have done or said things that we wish we could change or take back, but we can't. So we have done it. And our children are doing it. You ask what? Reacting to someone's actions. Amen? Listen. As parents, we were at times very selfish when we come or when it come or came to what we wanted. But we have to accept responsibility and acknowledge the truth. We hurt, disappointed, and confuse someone along the way. We didn't listen. We were not supported. And because we were, um, because we were really ashamed and embarrassed, we wouldn't explain it. And please don't think that this is the only way for a child to become disrespectful or disobedient. It's not. Because if you leave a child to him or herself, if you spoil them by never setting boundaries or saying no, it could be worse. And the scripture says they will bring their parents to shame. You can reference that in Proverbs, the 29th chapter, in that 15th verse. Many times we have compromised with our own truth in dealing with our children or parents, trying to please or, or satisfy the desires of um, a parent or a child. So they won't get mad or upset or keep someone or something from us. And if you have grandchildren, it may be grandchildren. Yet Jesus said in Matthew, the 10th chapter, in that 37th verse, he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Also, you can reference 1 Samuel, the second chapter, in that 29th verse, when Eli uh, knew his sons were having sex with the women that came to the temple. He did speak to them about it in verses 22 through 25, but they wouldn't listen. Yet he didn't do anything to stop them. So God sent a man of God to ask him in verse 29, Wherefore kick ye at my sacrifice and at my offering, which I have commanded in my habitations, and honor thy sons above me? to make yourselves fat with the chiefest or best of all the offerings of Israel, my people. Saints, we should never honor anything or anyone more than God. And listen, if we do, we should repent, asking God to forgive us. Now, it was said earlier that issues were not acknowledged because many people want to forget the root cause 
just let things stay covered. But the scripture says, he that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. You can reference that in Proverbs, the 28th chapter, in that 13th verse. Children of God, there is an answer. And that answer is forgiveness. I truly believe God's word. And that many of our children that seem to be uh, or seem to struggle more than most have failed to honor their parents, that it may be well with them. They have failed. Even some of us as adults have failed to respect our parents or parents for who they are because we have been or are unwilling to forgive them even though some of them may be dead and in their grave. I know from experience that it is hard to do. This, this is very hard to do. But I also know that with God's help, it can be done. Jesus told us to forgive, that we may be forgiven. Why? And I like this explanation. Because when we don't forgive others, we are denying our common ground as sinners in need of God's forgiveness. God's forgiveness of sin is not the direct result of our forgiving others, but it is based on our realizing what forgiveness means. Holy Father, forgive our children. Holy Father, forgive us. There is no shame, even though we are ashamed. Some things are out of our control. Remember Eli? We didn't raise our children to do the things they do or act the way they act. And even when we talk to them about it, they refuse to change. So what can we do? We can ask God to help us forgive them. You may say, it's not that. But the underbelly of it all is we were and are embarrassed, ashamed, and disappointed with how they chose to live their life. And it has hurt us and caused us to be angry or even desiring to give up. But just as they are to honor us for life, listen, we are to love them for life. Amen. And because we all have sinned and come short of God's glory, he said, judge not that you be not judged. Because remember, there's nothing new under the sun. And if our children don't get it right, the cycle will continue. They too will hurt, disappoint, and confuse someone along the way. Everything we need is in Christ, the Word of God. He is our hope and our wisdom. So have a talk with your child or your parent. Humble yourself and be very honest. Because once you bring what's in the dark into the light, it is exposed. Satan does his best work in the dark. He loves secrets, drama, and confusion. Ask God the Father to help you. Even now, begin to pray that God will break up the fallow ground, that hard-heartedness, and break that stubborn spirit. Many of us as parents, many experience abuse, being cursed at, being beaten, humiliated, shamed, embarrassed, it goes both ways, child or parent. It needs to stop. And remember, love is a powerful fruit of the Spirit. And without love, we are nothing. Saints, it's time to recover our children. It's time to seek their forgiveness and to forgive. Now, if something raised up in you just then, I suggest that you ask God to help you because pride, I'm telling you, 
will hinder you. You continue not to deal with it. You continue to act like it's not there. I'm telling you, it will continue to hinder you. Forgiveness is the answer. And a changed life is the result. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, we come in the name of Jesus. And again, I'm so thankful for this word. I ask that you would just move by your spirit to deal with our hearts and our minds. Oh God, just help us to acknowledge truth. Some things are painful, oh God. Some things are surface, but some things have to be dug deep within, oh God. It's as if a sore, oh God, that needs to be getting uh, cleaned out. Sometimes you have to dig deep within the sore, oh God, to get out all the bacteria and all the things that's unclean about it. And I'm asking you to dig deep within us in the name of Jesus. And help us, oh God, to acknowledge and confess our sins to forgive ourselves, to forgive our children and pray that you will help them to forgive us. We all have sinned according to your word and come short of your glory. We all have erred from your truth. But just because we pretend that we haven't doesn't make anything right. So I'm asking you, Holy Father, to go in the midst of your people, to move by your spirit, to deliver, to heal and to set captives free. Oh, God, I'm asking you to touch that son or that daughter and deliver them from the strongholds of the enemy that has had them bound to destroy the yoke that's around their neck, oh, God, that causes them to commit the same acts over and over and over again. Oh, God, only you can do this. And so we're asking you, even by faith, to move in the midst. We believe your word, oh, God, and we ask in the name of Jesus that your divine will be done. And we thank you for it. Amen. We also pray that the many teachings have been and are a blessing to you. Please share and subscribe. Listen as much as you can. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. I love you all.